DTF. It's on the rise. DTF printing, that is, because the other one is shown to be on a steady decline. People just aren't feeling it as much anymore. But in this video, if you're an apparel entrepreneur, you're about to get lucky because we're going to be diving into the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to maximize this technology to help build your brand faster than ever. So whether you guys are going to be working with print shops or other suppliers such as streetcrafter.com who made this video possible, by the end of this video, you're going to know everything that you need to truly maximize this technology. Now, the best part about DTF printing is that it could be applied to almost any product. This means backpacks, hats, shirts, polyester shirts, nylons, denims, because the way that this prints, it allows you to be really versatile with your art. Now, you may be wondering, how does it work? Well, once you upload your design to the designer, it's actually gonna be printed on a transparent film. Afterwards, it's actually gonna get an adhesive powder in it, and then it comes to the dryer where it's fully cured. Now, once it's fully cured, it gets set to the side, it gets cut and shipped to you. And once this is done, you're ready to start printing. Now look, it's important for you to know how the mechanics of DTF printing works, but what's more important is a formatting of art. Art is what's gonna get you a good product and make it a great product. And personally, I think DTF can go head to head with screen printing if you do it the right way. So let's dive into what it takes to create the proper artwork to truly maximize your production. Now the two most popular formatting for images are JPEG and PNG. Now, JPEGs are great for photography, things like your social media pictures, banners. PNGs are for printing applications, and if you're going to be using DTF, you want to use PNGs because they have a transparent background. Images on the left, you can see it has a white border. Images on the right have no borders. You want that. Now, the best form of art is always going to be vector, hands down, guys, because you can actually scale the image. You can zoom into it, and you won't see any blockingness. Now, for the image that we have on screen right now, this is a perfect representation of how you can design for press art and DTF guys. It has very sharp images and it also has a transparent background. Now, when you export your images, you always wanna make sure that you export as a PNG because JPEGs don't hold transparency. So make sure you select that PNG so it can be a transparent image and the design is the only thing being exported. Now, once you export that out, it's gonna go into the printer and if you look at this example here of the streetwear t-shirt, this is one art that was designed for it could work on either white or black but if you could see the black has a weird white outline around streetwear where in the white it looks better so always consider removing any gradient now the reason i'm being so strict with this is because we want you to create the best product for your brand but if you're just getting started it's okay to test around and feel the differences of each print method that you decide to use once you have the proper art it's time to go to printing so let's jump into the settings that you're going to need to have your heat presses on so you can get the best quality peel now an important thing to note about heat pressing and garments is that 315 at 15 seconds is great for 100 percent cotton now if you're working with polyesters or other colors that may discolor you're going to want to bring your temperature down. But what's really critical whenever you test any new fabric is just to have a spot testing on a fabric. So make sure you have a polyester shirt at home as well as a cotton shirt, a nylon jacket, and some denim available for you to test different applications and ideas that you have. The key is to be able to get consistent pressure as well as temperature without burning through the fabric. So what this means is that if you're printing on a nylon shirt or a nylon jacket, you're gonna wanna adjust either the pressure or the temperature. Now there is blanks out there that might be cheap that this color with a heat press. So you always wanna test all the blanks that you get. But when you're working with brands such as Bella Canvas, they've already tested a lot of their, their printing, their colors, their dyes, it's top of the line so you can get a consistent press and peel every single time. Again, every jacket and every fabric is a little different, so make sure you test these settings before you go into production. Now, if you're watching and wondering, can you scale this? Is this something that you could do from home? The answer to that is absolutely yes. Now, we're just gonna slide out this drawer here. Now, what's important to note is that you always wanna keep your garment flat. DTF pressing, if there's any bumps in the garment, if there's any like, wrinkles in it you're going to want to iron them out first which is why we're doing this pre-press this also removes moisture from the fabric if there is moisture it'll remove it and just make sure that whatever you're sticking on it is going to adhere for forever pretty much the dtf we have on streetcrafter.com has withstanded 50 plus washes over the last year a lot more than that probably 100 sun baked stretch you name it we've tested it so 315 15 seconds flat surface 
Now, this is gonna be a two, it's gonna be a two-sided print. Now, if you ever wanna know how to center stuff or like what you should be doing when it comes to pressing, you just wanna fold the sheet that you cut. Don't fold the design, but fold the top of it like this. If you fold the top, when you fold the design, you now have a centered line. This is gonna help you in placement. So bring that in there, line it up with about right here at the edge of the collar coming down to about the sleeves here. With that there, we're gonna press it down. 315, 15 seconds. Got the DTF sheet in there. Now, this DTF is actually cold peel, so we're gonna let it heal. We're gonna set it down here. Here's a good tip here. You could either have a cold rag or you could just set it face down on the table. The table's cold enough. So we got the sheet here. It's cold. Peel it off. See the design did not stay on the film. Came onto the shirt. And now the shirt's got the first press here. So there it is right there. We got the, the pocket press. Now we're gonna do the back. So since this is a pretty big back design, this is designed for about 13 by 18, 19 or so. We're not gonna wanna go too far low. This is also where bigger heat presses come in hand. A lot of times the heat presses being sold don't go this big. So the bigger the press you have, the more surface area you can press, the bigger the prints you can create. So with this one, we're just gonna line it up there. What I'm gonna do is just make sure that the design is roughly even on each side. Good to go on the front, top and bottom. And we're gonna press this baby. Now this is a pretty big print, so a big heat press is good to have. Okay. Now in a production run, if you were doing a production run for your brand, you would press, you set it to the side, let it cool down, press the next one, set the shirts aside, and peel them all off at the same time. Super fast that way. Okay, got the press. It's nice and cold. All you gotta do, peel it off. We're gonna hit it one more time. I like to get a second press as optional. Something like a Teflon sheet comes in handy. You don't wanna put the iron right up against the design. Teflon sheet also takes some of the some of the rubbery feel away. If you like the rubbery feel, one hit is great. I personally like more of the, of the graphic feel. It's hard to describe. But with a second press, it really embeds the design right onto the garment, right onto the shirt. The better the shirt quality that you have, the better the overall imprint is gonna be, guys. I'm not gonna lie. When you go with the cheaper blanks, if you hit that second press, sometimes it doesn't feel that good. It feels very papery. But when you're actually working with a good graphic that has this room to breathe like we've been describing, you can see this isn't just a, a really thick square image. This has a lot of broken design. They designed it so it could really breathe through the garment and overall just look incredible. So huge shout outs to Mentality. There's a collaboration they're doing with a high school program and uh, we're printing out their samples here using press art. So you guys can do this too. It'd be as simple as just ordering up the press art, printing it on there and then showing it off to your community or reselling it for a profit and then really building out that demand before you go bulk quantity. All you need is different tools for what you're planning to do. Now, if you're just getting started, an iron is a great option. So once you cut out your squares, you're gonna see this little thing here. Now this has some glue on the background. So with the glue on the background, you're gonna be able to actually adhere it to anything. Now, when it comes to handheld presses, guys, this works incredible for a lot of these special applications. So we're talking about like anything with headwear, uh, things with little details that you might wanna put on a jacket or a sleeve that is a little hard for a big heat press to get. This is an incredible option. So we're gonna go ahead and just start sticking this here. You always just wanna make sure that wherever you're printing, there's no seams because within the seams is where it gets a little tricky. But in this example, guys, it's looking like it's gonna fit right there. So we're gonna keep that in there. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna put something on the back here. You can use almost anything as long as it's kinda like gives you a little backing so it doesn't burn you. That's really what you're trying to do. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna just kinda stick it one time, you want the glue to start activating on the actual product. So when you're right here, what you'll see is, as I'm pressing it, maybe leave it for a few seconds, one, two, three, four, five-ish Mississippi. So that's what I'm doing, guys. I'm using this little hat press 
to just make sure that the glue is, is melting on the product. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn it around, put it on the table, and give it a little bit of time. You wanna make sure that it's cold before you peel. So, get that peel. Check that out. Incredible. We're gonna do it one more time for good measure. What we're talking about. If I would have designed for this better, I would have considered how it grew. So again, guys, how you design is everything to a quality product. If you know it's gonna bend like that, you should curve the letters downwards instead of keeping them upwards. This might look cool on a shirt, but it doesn't work on a bucket head as much. But we're still gonna do it. Let's go. Wait for it to cool off. Now we're gonna peel this off. This little thing, you could put, you could put uh, neck labels, you could put hats, you could do a bunch of different sweaters, a, a bunch of different hits on products that you wouldn't think about because this limits you to a, a flat press wherever you can get it. This, you can get real creative with it. So these little handheld presses are incredible. They're definitely an amazing value. So make sure you guys check out the links in the description where we linked a couple that you should check out. An iron is a great option, but if you want to actually produce in production in a production setting, you're definitely going to want to invest into a heat press. Now, the heat presses that we recommend are the ones that are in the $700 to the $1,500 price range. The reason for this is because those have better consistent heat as well as pressure, and it gives you tools to help you increase your production times. If you go with the cheaper versions, the $200 versions and stuff, you're gonna have issues when it comes to time, temperature, or pressure. You're not gonna have consistency, and this is where some of the mess ups happen. So make sure that if you're thinking about producing for a production run, invest in the seven, $800. We're gonna be linking some of the heat presses that we recommend in the description right down below. We're also gonna be diving into a video on this channel that we're gonna be linking right up above that we call the secret weapon to your clothing brand. Now, the beauty about DTF is that it allows you to be fully creative with almost any design you can think of, and it allows you to start making products right now versus having to wait months from a manufacturer. So if you're ready to get started, we want to give a huge shout out to streetcrafter.com for making this video possible. Check out the links in the description right down below and use streetcrafter10 for you to get 10% off your first purchase. If you're currently a street crafter, let us know what you're going to be making next in the comments down below. And more importantly, if you're looking to get started but are on a budget, I want to fill you in on something. We recently created a video where we showed you how to make the most of $200 to build your brand. This includes the designing, the launching, the full collection. Video is going to be right here. Make sure you check that out.